our buddy feedback control. Okay. So when you do the Z score, do you need the Cisco text display? Yes. And a good thing again, all of those displays you can turn them on and off from the training screen. So it's not that important what you have pre-selected. The beauty of the pre-selected means every time you bring it up, it's going to look the same. So if there's specific panels you want to see, check them ahead of time so that every time you open that protocol, you know what you're going to expect to see. OK? What if <coughs> it's, it's a display I'll show you from the training screen when we have it running. It's too hard to dis. Yeah, all of those we can show, click them on, click them off. Once we're at the training screen, and you'll see them. It's hard to dis describe them. Um, feedback control, first option, reward sound. Definition, dot wave when all criteria is met. Okay? So, let's think about this for a second. If this particular protocol is down theta, up beta, down high beta. We have three components that we're actually basing feedback on. Okay? When all three of them meet criteria, how many sounds are we going to expect to hear? One. One. Correct. Okay. If, let's say, the go doesn't meet criteria, but the other two do meet criteria, how many sounds are we going to hear? Zero. Zero. <laughs> Dot wave when all criteria is met. Okay, all or nothing with reward sounds. Okay, now there's an exception with reward sounds I want to bring up. People have asked in the in the past, what if I want to do four or eight components all inhibits, and I don't want want a reward? I'm going to do four inhibits, wide four wide band inhibits like a Total squash, no reward. If all four stops meet criteria, how many sounds? One. One. This is the only mode that we have here, other than the event wizard, that gives you the capability of doing a complete squash with no reward and still getting a tone. You're getting tone, the tone is your default? The, no, the tone is when all stops meet criteria, I get a ding or a bell or whatever I preset from the training screen. You have eight different dot .wave files you can call to. You only get the sound when you meet criteria after you've held the condition for how long? 500 milliseconds, half a second. Because it's reward criterion. Yes? They're completely different. It's like how is an MPEG different from an ABI? Huh? It's a format. It's a format? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean it's it could be a dot MPEG, it could be a dot MP3, could, you know, they're just different formats. Dot wave files are nice because you can make short files and recall them. Most of the time when you're using MP3s and things like that, you're usually talking about longer files. You don't want a file that's every time you meet criteria, you want something that's beep, 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 short. And that's the nature of the way you Yeah. Now, again, you can do with other formats, you can do that. But dot wave is one of the easier ones to do. MIDI, you're actually using the internal synthesizer in the computer, so it's, complete, it's a little different. It's not really a MIDI file. You're doing a MIDI property. You're using a synthesizer. You're not really playing a file. What happens as a result? You're, what, yeah. you're hearing an ongoing complex tone? It could be a complex tone, <coughs> but it, it's, it's just a different sound capability. That, that's really... The, the dot .wav files are kind of predefined. You're going to hear the same thing every time. With the MIDI, you can change the style, you can change the modulation. In the event wizard, you can change the key it's played in, the note, the frequency. I mean, you have a lot more flexibility with a MIDI note than you do with a dot .wav file. Dot .wav file is whatever is pre-recorded. It's basically how it works. Okay? So let's drop down here. Component sound. Dot .wav for each component. 
Now this is where it gets a little tricky, okay? It's still a dot wave for each component, but it's really dot wave for each go component. Okay? So let's put together the typical alpha theta type protocol. I'm going to put a down train on delta, I'm going to up train theta, I'm going to up train alpha, and I'm going to put a down train or a inhibit on high beta. So I'm going to have four components in question. All four components meet criteria. How many sounds am I going to hear? Four. Eh. With component sounds, I'm going to hear two. Yeah. Got four components, but you only got two goes. Oh. The stops are true inhibits. The only exception to that is reward sounds, where when all stops meet criteria, even if there's not a go, I hear a tone. With component, that's not the case. Component, they're back to true inhibits. So the goes are what's important. Now, they all have to meet criteria, right, to get a sound. But what if my delta meets criteria, which is a stop or an inhibit, my theta meets criteria, my alpha doesn't, and my high beta does? How many sounds do I get? One. Okay. If they all four meet, I get two because there's two goes. What if my delta doesn't, but my alpha does, theta does, and high beta does? How many sounds do I get? Two. How many? Delta didn't. Theta does, alpha does, high beta does. How many sounds? Zero. Why? True inhibit. If the inhibits don't meet criteria, no sound. Okay? You know, I would think in alpha theta training it would be advantageous to do the power or relative power of theta and alpha in the training. Well, it, it is done like that with the EEG audio program, where it takes on, depending if alpha's um, a higher percent energy than theta, there's one sound. If theta's a higher percent, there's a second sound. And there's two individual sounds for alpha and theta. And, and that's a built module. Voltage in there too? Yeah, that, that's completely, and there's a whole manual on alpha theta. It matches. The Neural Cybernetics Alpha Theta program, it was designed, the authors helped design it, and that one is a complex Alpha Theta protocol that you're talking about. This is just using it as a simple goes and stops. Mm -hmm. Then it doesn't care about this percentages and everything. It's either going to meet criteria or it's not. So if you're going to set that up, where would you go? We'll see that later this afternoon. Okay. okay. Um, so let's stick with here for a second though. Down train on delta. Go on theta, go on alpha, down on high beta. Okay? Delta meets, theta meets, alpha meets, high beta doesn't meet. How many sounds? One. Zero. 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 Oh, zero. One. Okay. The reason I do this and I drive you guys crazy <laughs> is because it's a real good scenario to be in a situation that no matter what you select, you know what you're expecting to hear. Okay? Because if you start a session and there's no sound, instead of having to call and go, Bill, my <laughs> protocol is not working, I'm not getting any sound, but they're meeting criteria, you can double check a couple things. Most of the time what the scenario is, is you have another stop selected you didn't realize. And the threshold's not even close to where it needs to be. Or you have so many things selected and you're on reward sound that you're forgetting that all eight components need to meet criteria because I got eight inhibits and hold that condition for a half a second to get a sound. Tough scenario. 